Good morning everyone, I am Riza Bullion and I am tasked to discuss about the topic Anatomy Principle in Fingerprint. So first, we will define first what is fingerprint. Fingerprints are the tiny ridges, swirls, and valley patterns on the tip of each finger. They form from pressure in a baby's tiny developing fingers in the womb. No two people have been found to have the same fingerprints. They are totally unique. There's one in 64 billion chance that your fingerprint will match up exactly with someone else. Fingerprints are made of an arrangement of ridges called friction ridge. Each ridge contains pores which are attached to sweet glands under the skin. So according to this principle, a fingerprint is an individual characteristics and no two fingers are found to have identical ridge patterns. This characteristic is so individual that even identical twins who share same genetic code do not share fingerprints. A fingerprint is an individual characteristic. No two people have been found with the exact same fingerprint pattern. A fingerprint pattern will remain unchanged for the life of an individual. However, the print itself may change due to permanent scars and diseases. Principles governing the study of fingerprints The principle of constancy A fingerprint will remain unchanged during an individual's lifetime. The papillary ridges are immutable, perennial or individual from the beginning of the third month of the embryonic period until the decomposition sets in after death. What is friction ridge? Friction ridge skins refers to the skin of the palms of the hands and fingers as well as the soles of the feet and toes. Friction ridge skin can be differentiated from the skin of the rest of the body by the presence of raised ridges by a pattern mist that is thicker and structurally more complex, by increased sensory abilities, by the absence of hair, and by the absence of sebaceous glands. The presence of friction ridges enhances friction for skin use in grasping. Note that the term fingerprint refers to an impression left by the friction skin of a finger rather than the anatomical structure itself. How are fingerprint ridges attached to the skin? Each ridge contains pores which are the attached to the sweat glands under the skin. You leave fingerprints on glasses, tables, and just about anything else you touch because of this sweat. All of the ridges of fingerprints form patterns called loops, whirls, or arcs. The raised portion of the surface of epidermis and the palmar or plantar skin, they form definite patterns which are given names and which are subject to classification. The depression or spaces between the friction ridge are called furrows. How are fingerprint ridges attached to the skin? Also, friction ridge skin is present only on our hands and feet. It is comprised of ridges and furrows that allow us to grab objects. If we did not have friction skin, objects would simply slip between our fingers and toes. Friction skin is present from the time a fetus reaches four months inside the mother's womb and does not deteriorate until after we die. Women have suffer friction skin than men. Friction skin, it's made up of ridges that run parallel to each other. These ridges are known as friction ridges, epidermal ridges, or papillary ridges. In between, these ridges are furrows. So, there are seven ridge characteristics. These are dot or island, bifurcation, ending ridge, lake or enclosure, independent ridge, spur, and lastly, the crossover. So first is the dot. Dot is an isolated ridge unit whose length is approximates its width and size. Bifurcation, a single ridge which splits into two ridges forming a Y-shaped structure. Ending ridge, a single friction that terminates within the friction ridge structure. Ridge enclosure. A single friction that bifurcates and rejoins after a short course and continues as a single friction ridge. 
Next is the independent ridge, a separate ridge that formed between two ridges running parallel. Next is spur, a bifurcation with one short ridge branching off a longer ridge. Next is the crossover, a connecting friction ridge between parallel running ridges generally right angle. So also there are seven identification and interpretation of fingerprint pattern. The recurving ridge, converging ridge, diverging ridge, pattern area, type lines, focal point, and lastly the sufficient recurve. First is the recurving ridge. A ridge that curves back in the direction from which it started. The curve at the top or close end is the recurve. It is, round, it is rounded, not an angle, nor spoiled by an appendage. Next, converging ridge, a ridge that meet at one point forming an angle. It is pointed in an angular, not rounded, as a recurve. Angles are formed by one ridge abutting or running into another. Diverging ridge. These are merely two ridges running side by side and suddenly separating, one going one way and the other going one way. In other words, it is the spreading apart of two ridges which have been running parallel or nearly parallel. Next is the pattern area, that part of a loop and whirl in which the cores and deltas and ridges appear. It is enclosed by a type by a top lines. Next, top lines. These lines are basic boundaries of most fingerprint pattern. There are two enormous ridges which run parallel, diverge or surround or tend to surround the pattern area. Focal point, a point within the pattern area of the loops and whirls which are used to classify such as the delta and the core. And lastly, the sufficient recurve. It may be defined as that part of recurving ridges between the shoulder of a loop. It must be free of any appendage abutting upon the outside of the recurve at a right angle. So how are friction ridge formed? The friction ridge typically formed on the hands of the fetus at approximately 10 weeks gestation and on the feet shortly thereafter. The general flow of ridges across the hands and feet is established by the growth stress present on the hand or foot at the time of formal or formation of the friction ridges. Why it is impossible to erase friction ridge? The sweat glands located in the dermis discharge sweat at the skin surface through sweat pores found at the top of the ridges. It is impossible to erase our fingerprint by destroying the epidermis layer. You must also destroy the dermis layer. The dermis eventually becomes our epidermis as our skin regenerates. How are fingerprint patterns formed in a fetus? Fingerprints are set in stone by the time a fetus reaches 17 weeks. Fingerprint pattern formation consists of two components, developmental and genetic. The rich pattern development not only depends on genetic factors but also on unique physical conditions. So, can fingerprints be permanently changed or destroyed? An individual's fingerprints remain the same throughout his or her entire life. Minor cuts or abrasions and some skin diseases such as eczema or psoriasis may cause temporary disturbances to the fingerprints but upon healing the fingerprints will return to the original pattern. More serious injuries to the skin that damage the dermis might leave scars the change or disrupt the rich pattern of the fingerprints, but examining the skin outside the area of damage will reveal the same fingerprint pattern. So can you erase your fingerprints? You can scar your fingerprints with a cut or temporarily lose them through abrasion, acid, or certain skin conditions, but fingerprints lost in this way will grow back within a month. As you age, Skin on your fingertips becomes less elastic and the ridge get thicker. This doesn't change your fingerprint but it's harder to scan or take a print from it. So for the fingerprint regeneration, the ridges of fingerprints are particularly susceptible to wear. Brick laying is often used as an example of a repeated activity that can wear down fingerprints rendering them unsuitable for a personal identification. Likewise, some people think criminals 
have purposely burned off their fingerprints either with acid or fire. In fact, cancer sufferers who are treated with certain forms of chemotherapy can also temporarily lose their fingerprints in a process known as chemotherapy-induced acral erythema. The chemical treatment capacitabine causes painful swelling and peeling on the palms of hands and soles of feet, sloughing the fingerprints off with the skin. So, schema, so chemotherapy induced acral erythema, it is the hand foot syndrome, which means the red, reddening, swelling, numbness, and discommission on palms of the hands and soles of the feet that can occur after chemotherapy in patients with cancer. So, it is possible to change our fingerprints. Since fingerprints exist exclusively on the topmost layer of our skin, there are many ways in which they can be altered. Although the effect is usually temporary, any repetitive abrasion to the skin can wear down the ridges, which is why veteran br bricklayers can sometimes lose their fingerprints. Exposure to acids and bases like agricultural lime can also erase fingerprints at least until the epidermis grows back over 30 days. It is impossible to change our fingerprints. In extreme cases, criminals have intentionally burned or otherwise scared their hands in an attempt to disguise their fingerprints. However, the only permanent way to change the full set of fingerprints would be to undergo a double hand transplant, which although medically possible that does seem a little excessive. Can fingerprint be forged? Fingerprints can be successfully forged or transferred. It is maintained that all the admitted good forged prints can be produced. A microscopic examination of the fine detail will invariably disclose characteristic imperfections. A fingerprint forgery may be either of two types, namely, a forgery produced by means of a replica of the friction-rich pattern of a finger, this type includes all those methods whereby a rubber stamp or other cast is obtained, which is the likeness of the actual friction-rich pattern. The fingerprint thus disposed on the stamp may be deposited at a crime scene by inking the stamp with perspiration, blood, paint, or other material to suit the case at hand. A forgery of this type may be looked upon as a true forgery in every sense of the word. This type includes all transfers processes wherein an original latent of an innocent person may be picked up and transferred to some object at the crime scene. This means that the natural secretion of the original latent is actually transferred from one surface to another. Such forgery is technically not a forgery at all since the latent impressions actually found is the original latent transferred from, from a previous surface. It may be regarded as a forgery, however, on the grounds that fraudulent intent is evident. So, who used acid to burn off and change his fingerprints? In year 1934, John Dollinger was one of the America's most wanted. He was in hiding in Chicago and looking for a way to escape arrest. He turned to plastic surgery hoping to transform his face and erase his former identity. His lawyer introduced him to Wilhelm Luser, a German-born physician involved in the narcotics trade. Luser agreed to change Dellinger's face and fingertips for $5,000. To modify, to modify Dellinger's prints, Luser cut away the outer layer of skin the epidermis and treated the fingertips with hydrochloric acid. He then scraped away the remaining visible ridges. Dillinger could not use his hands for days, but his fingertips grew back mostly intact. The centers were obscured, but the edges of his prints were still recognizable. His prints were still identifiable, but he did not successfully modify them. 
One changed so drastically it appeared to be a loop instead of a whirl. Fingerprints are hardy. The ridges visible on the epidermis run into the deeper derm dermis layer of skin. In order to truly oblet obliterate a fingerprint, every layer of the skin must be removed. An article in the Journal of Criminal Law and Criminology from year 1935 recommended at least one millimeter of skin must be removed in order to ensure riches do not regenerate. Next is Robert James Pitts, also known as Robert J. Phillips and Roscoe Pitts or Ronald Phillips. He is known as a man without fingerprint or a man without friction ridge. In year 1932, while Pitts was serving a sentence in Alcatraz Prison, Alcatraz Federal Pen Penitentiary, he formulated a plan to remove his friction ridge. He got out of Alcatraz after serving a long stretch for bank robbery and burglary. After committing a series of crimes including a major warehouse hates in North Carolina, the police arrested him in Miami for robbery. The authorities in Florida released him shortly thereafter for lack of evidence. In year 1941, after he committed a burglary in Charlotte, North Carolina, he went to New York, New Jersey to visit a doctor in Union City, New Jersey, who wanted to experiment with the alteration of fingerprints. Using a knife, the doctor peeled the skin from the distal phalange of each finger down to the regenerative dermal layer. From Philip's right fingers, then taped his hand to skin that had been pulled away from his chest. Three weeks later, when the chest skin had grown onto his fingers, the hand was separated from his chest. The technique worked on the tips of Philip's fingers were patches of smooth pink skin. The doctor repeated the process on his patient's left hand. On his scar tissue remained although all traces of the friction ridge system had disappeared along with Pitts. Phillips enjoyed six weeks of boredom and pain, but when it was over, he was delighted with the results. In October 1941, Phillips, while driving through Austin, Texas, was pulled over by a patrolman. When he couldn't produce a driver's license or any other form of identification, the officer took him into custody. When arrested, Phillips had called the police. His name was Roscoe Pitts and his odd locking fingerprint card went into the FBI's files under that name. At the police station, the fingerprint technician took Pitts prints. The impressions didn't show any rich design, however, discernible ridges on the sides of the fingertips and just below the top joint of each finger. The police were surprised to find that he had no fingerprints. The middle phalange of his fingers were printed and subsequently compared with all persons listed as wanted by the FBI. Pitts was identified and became infamous as the man without fingerprints. He was arrested many times after that for a variety of offenses, included, including murder. Pitts died in prison in 1976 at the age of 62, having had an active criminal record for 42 years. So that's end of my presentation. Thank you and God bless us all.